Hey everyone, this episode looks at our trip down south. We visited Sun Studios, saw Pearl Jam. We've got some behind the scenes footage with our interview with local folk band New Lore. We even saw a Beatle. This is episode 89 of In It to Spin It in Memphis and Nashville. So before we get into the episode here, on a sad note, I want to send a rest in peace out to Jack Bruce. I've always loved Cream since a very young age. They've made some of the most psychedelic music, some of the best guitar solos. Music will live on. I still listen to it a lot. Rest in peace. Where are we now? Memphis. So here we are in Memphis, Tennessee, on Beale Street, about to take our first walk down the famous road. Shit. We are like literally three minutes from sun and we got caught. This is it. Severe weather warning in effect. We just got into it. So we made it to Sun Studios fairly unscathed. The real bad weather was coming up after as we left. You get in there, it's a really nice little place. You can get some snacks and uh, check out merch, other trinkets on the walls while you wait for your tour time to roll around. They've pretty much opened the vault of the, for the 45s. Pretty expensive stuff. This is commonly referred to as the first rock and roll song ever, Rocket 88. And that is the original acetate of it. Incredible. Legend has it this is the first ever Elvis record that uh, Marion Keisker got him to sign gratefully. She was a huge, the first Elvis Presley backer. She worked at Sun the day he uh, first ever stepped in as an 18 year old and recorded. This is the actual studio side of things where Elvis and his uh, other two friends there, the bass player and the drummer, played. This is it, it's where everything was recorded in sun. Unchanged, untouched, pretty nice. And the weather was waiting for us outside. It was, uh, the city was almost vacant just due to uh, all the extreme weather warnings. Tornado watch in effect. And uh, doesn't phase the old Vancouverites walking around, no umbrella. Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! We're at the BBQ Club in Memphis, Tennessee. One of my favorite live albums of all time is this double by Seeger, Nine Tonight. He introduces uh, Trying to Live My Life Without You as an old Memphis song, so it was a really cool moment.
So we finally arrived in Nashville, went straight to Broadway to a place that was recommended to us, Jack's Barbecue. At any given time throughout our trip, there was 30 to 50 people in line, usually out the door. The place has a big reputation. One of the best meals, if not the best meal we had all trip. Unforgettable stuff. Went home, passed out. So we got up early and went straight to Third Man Records. It was really cool to finally be here. Sort of a Barnum and Bailey feel inside, lot of, lots to look at. Saw the uh, place where Neil made his latest album on the voiceograph thing here. So I did pick up a couple records at uh, Third Man along with a lot of little trinkety stuff. This is Bearcat by Rufus Thomas. Jack White has uh, teamed up with Sun to repress a bunch of 45s. This is a response record to Big Mama Thornton's Hound Dog, the original writer. Uh, it cost him 25 G's in copyright infringement back then. Huge. Uh, another one here I got is Flat Duo Jets. This is an old group from the late 80s, early 90s. Jack White has said was hugely in influential on his career. The, the original pressings of these are just through the roof. This is a 1991 uh, album that Third Man has put out. I think they redid all their stuff, but uh, Mother Up Duff, local Vancouver band, first got me into these guys by mentioning them to me. Cool stuff, good listen, full band. Um, Dexter is still making music, so you can check that out if you'd like. So Nashville really does live up to the name Music City. There's a band in every bar window all hours of the day. Broadway is just a really cool, bustling street. Had a lot of fun checking that out. Even on their little electric boxes, there's just a speaker pumping out tunes. Then you go down Broadway a little further, you might run into a band shooting a music video. It's just so alive, it's such a cool place. Had an amazing time on our way to uh, interview New Lore. So I had lined up this uh, interview about a month prior and on sheer faith we just showed up in East Nashville outside this house with the right address. Not used to this beautiful jam space, not what we typically see in Vancouver. Half jam space, half studio. You can see in episode 88 the full uh, interaction with these guys, an amazing acoustic performance. Have a look. So Nular heard that we were going to Grimey's next and they didn't want us to cab since we'd already spent money on the cab to the jam space. They piled us into the touring van, really nice of them. They also suggested we hit 12th Street so we did just that. We arrived at Grimey's front door courtesy of these guys and uh, we saw some familiar faces in the record bins. So definitely always cool to see Vancouver bands being sold in record stores abroad. This is uh, Peace, their great album, The World Is Too Much With Us. Also stumbled across some Ketamines records. Always nice to see that. Now the guy in the leather there that just walked onto the security footage behind Nicole, that's Luke. He came in to uh, help me choose what I wanted there today. He's working. Had a big influence on it. I knew I wanted something from Jeff and the Brotherhood. He suggested this live at Third Man Recording. He said it's their greatest thing they've ever recorded. And as usual, like the Melvins and King Tough, recorded live to tape, mistakes and all. Good listen from these guys, Jeff and the Brotherhood, Nashville favorites. I also stumbled across a 12-inch My Morning Jacket out of my system remixes, four different remixes. I didn't own this. I gotta have everything MMJ, so that's in the collection now. And this band, Luke, again, is now in this band. It's a Burger Records uh, group. For the Love of the Game is the title of the album. The band is called Natural Child, and he told me that it was 70s Stone stuff, and I'm always skeptical about that, but this delivers. It's really, really good. Natural Child, check them out. 
And with that, we were off to see a 72-year-old play 39 songs almost for three hours. The legend, the Beatle, McCartney. Unreal show. Let's hear it for John! 